Hey guys, this is Stephanie and I'm Stacks on Stacks on Stacks. Today I'm coming to you with my mid-year freak out tag. Basically, I get to sum up the books that I have read the first half of the year and talk about those a little bit. I did do this tag last year, so I'll go ahead and link that down below. Though while watching it, I realized my editing was sad at best, and you probably just didn't watch it. Just don't watch it. But before I do that, I kind of want to give you guys a bit of an update on my New Year's resolutions because we are halfway through, so I thought it'd be a good time to do that. I had a goal to read 100 books this year, and so far I have read 59 books, which is over halfway, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I also wanted to finish five series, and I finished three of them already, which is great. And then I've changed my last two because the two that were on there decided I'm not that interested, I'm not going to finish those series. So I went ahead and matched it up with series that I think I will finish. The first one is the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes. This is one, I think I read the first two and maybe half of the third book. Um, and I think there's either six or seven in the series. So I will have to get on it if I'm going to finish the series. But this is one that I did kind of enjoy. It's like a YA Game of Thrones type of thing, you know, like marrying and alliances, but I'm having that person's baby, things like that. And it was good, actually. I did like it. It's just a YA version, so, you know, it's not as graphic as Game of Thrones. And that is for the best when it comes to me. The other series I want to finish up is the Dorothy Must Die series. Now, I've actually read the first three books in this series and the first two sets of novellas. I need to read the third set of novellas and then the last book. It is a book series that I like. I feel like it gets a ton, a ton, a ton of hate on booktube and it's not amazing but it is good and clever and i enjoy it i am nervous because the last book is like like maybe half the size and i'm like books should not get smaller and serious guys that is a bad sign so i'm nervous that i won't like it but i don't have high standards so it can't let me down that much right i also had a goal to read 10 classics and i have read seven so far though i'm kind of rethinking what I qualify as a classic. I basically think that anything Agatha Christie wrote is a classic, but I'm realizing that just because she wrote it doesn't mean it's a classic, just means it's old. So I might have to recategorize a few of those, but I'm confident I will hit my 10 classics by the end of the year. I also had a bit of a rule about only buying five books a month, so I wouldn't end up in book jail, currently in book jail, though you wouldn't know it because I haven't made any videos about it. So that one is not going well. My fifth resolution is to read six nonfiction books, and I have read four. Boom! I can do it. I can read books that are not fiction. It's a bit of a struggle for me, but I'm doing it anyway. My sixth resolution was to read 50 books that I own, and out of 100, you'd be like, oh, sure, no problem. But for some reason, I just keep getting them from the library. I'll be like, I want to read this book, but I shouldn't buy this book, so I'll get it this way. And then, yeah. But I've read 21 books that I own so far this year, so that number does need to increase a bit before the end of the year. I also want to read 20 graphic novels by the end of the year, and so far I've read 15, so I'm more than good on that. I have a feeling that one will not be difficult for me. I also want to read 20 books that were written before the year 2000, and that's where I'm thinking these Agatha Christie's might come in handy, is they're not classics technically, but they are older and I'm trying to read some older books to remember that not everything new is best. Sometimes older things are very, very, very good, like myself. My ninth resolution was to participate in three readathons, and I'm currently participating in one. I am not certain I will, you know, get an A on it, but I have participated and I'm hoping I can do two more at some point by the end of the year. I'll probably do one of the readoramas and I'm hoping to find a graphic novel readathon because I think that would be fun. I don't know if I'll be able to participate in book two a because I will be on a trip for my anniversary that week. And as much as my husband supports my reading habit, I don't think he's going to want me with my nose in books the entire trip. I also don't want to have my nose in a book the entire trip. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. I might do it a little. I don't know. And the last one is to do rereads. And I've actually reread, I think, three books already this year, which is pretty good. I will be rereading more. I'm planning on rereading the whole Dresden Files series. They just came out with, the, I don't know if it's the 16th book or if it's like a novella that's after the 15th book. I haven't quite decided yet, but either way, I'm going to read it. So on to the tag. Question number one, what is the best book that you have read so far this year? I was tempted to put all the five star reads that I have so far this year on this list, but I didn't. But I did narrow it down to two, three, four, five 
five <laughs> books that are the best books so far this year. So the first two are by Agatha Christie, who if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you're gonna know I absolutely love her. First one is Sparkling Cyanide by Agatha Christie, and the second one is Endless Night, which I don't own yet, also by Agatha Christie. These were both five-star reads. Again, she's a genius on how to write murder and keep it interesting, how she wrote like 90 books and they're all different. I don't know, I'll have to get to all those, but these two were definitely stand out fantastic. And I even read other Agatha Christie's this year. I actually narrowed it down, so there's that. Also on that list is Cricket Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. This is the sequel to the Six of Crows duology. It was great and fantastic and fun and you barely have time to catch your breath because it's just action, action, action. And I just loved it and I wouldn't mind if she wrote another one. Not that Lee Bardugo watches my channel, but you could write another one. Another great read, best read, I don't know, so far, Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I really, really, really did like this book so much that you're gonna see it again in another category of this tag. And I'm not gonna explain this book. I think I've talked about it a lot on my channel. Probably know what it is about, if not, you should find a video where I do talk about it because it's a pretty good book. And the last one, possibly my favorite so far this year, I don't know, it's so hard to say, is going to be War Breaker by Brandon Sanderson. I read this in April and I still think about it. And I actually was like, oh, I wanna reread it, but I have so many other books and it's a thick one. And I have so many other books that I'm like, I need to read for the first time that the reread is gonna have to take a back seat on this one. But I did love this book. The magic system is beautiful. The characters are incredible. And you will see this one again in this tag. Question number two, best sequel that you have read so far this year and being me, I'm going to be talking about two books because you know what? It's my channel. I make the rules. First one is going to be Hero of Ages, which is the third book, sequel, whatever, in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. I can't talk about it a lot because it is a sequel, but it is the final book in that first trilogy and it was beautiful, wonderful, fast paced, incredible, exciting. The characters, the setting, the world, the universe, it was just and I loved it. I loved it. And if you like high fantasy, read this series. You will definitely enjoy it. The other sequel I'm gonna talk about is Dazzling Heights, which is the second book in the Thousandth Floor series. Now this is a series I don't feel gets a whole lot of love on booktube. It is kind of like a gossip girl meets a sci-fi-ish world. Um, which when I describe it that way, I wouldn't like it either, but it actually just, I don't know, it's just good writing. I do enjoy it. I enjoyed the first one. I enjoyed the second one, maybe even more than the first one. So that's pretty good, I would say. Number three, a new release that you haven't read, but you want to. And again, I have two of these. First one is going to be Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. It just came out this month, so I haven't had time to read it. I'm on the wait list at the library. I will get to it. It's the third book in the Ember of Ashes series, so I can't talk about it very much again, but I'm excited to read it. And I actually was debating like rereading the first two. I didn't really have time, but I, I take away more from books than I think I do, so I think I'll be okay. The other one that has come out, and I even own it, and I haven't read it yet, is Wires and Nerve, Volume 2, and this is following Aiko with the Lunar Chronicles, and she is a fun, funky, fun character who I just love it, and it's graphic novel too, so woot woot for that. And I, it is, I think it is the only book in the Lunar Chronicle series I haven't read. I think I'm kind of holding out for like a readathon or something like that for this one, but I'll probably get it read before the end of the year. I mean, I do own it now. Question for the most anticipated release for the rest of the year. And again, I have two because I cheat on my channel. First one is going to be Towering Sky, which is the third, I'm not sure, final book in the Thousandth Floor series by Catherine McPhee. McPhee? McGee. Catherine McGee. Catherine McPhee is a singer, I think. Hmm. But this one's by Catherine McGee. And again, series doesn't get a lot of love. I'm not really sure why. Like it's good writing and it's good. It's just not popular, I guess. But who decides what's popular anyway? I read the first one some point last year, or the second one in January. The third one comes, the third one comes out in August, I think. So I am eagerly awaiting that one. I am also excited to read My Plain Jane. And this one is by, Ashton Brody, Jody Meadows, Cynthia Hand. Oh, it's Brody Ashton. Brody Ashton. Boy, I really messed that one up. This is the same people who wrote My Lady Jane, which I loved so much. And I'm excited to read this one, but I have to read Jane Eyre first because I don't think I've actually read it. So I need to read that one first and this one. So I got to get on that so I can get on this because this one sounds great. Number five, the biggest disappointment. Wah, wah, wah. And again, of course, I have 
three books that completely disappointed me. The first one is going to be Gracely by Kristen Kishore. This is just a book that I feel like was talked about on YouTube and is like so great and so classic and such great fiction. I didn't love it. I wanted to love it. So I didn't hate it. I just didn't love it. I found the pacing weird. I found some of the writing weird, like speeding up at parts where you should be slowing down and analyzing detail. And then all of a sudden the thing happens is done. And I didn't love the main character. And there were just things in it that I was like, this is disappointing. I was expecting more from this. I also was highly disappointed in The Raven King, and this is not it, this is the first book in the series, by Maggie Steve Otter. I really liked the first three books, so I thought the fourth book was gonna be fantastic, and it really wasn't. It was, the ending of it was such a letdown for me. It was random and rushed, and I was like, no! So, that one was a huge disappointment. I think I might've had too high a standard for it, I'm not certain, but I didn't, I didn't like it disappoint. And the last one, I'm not going to say I had huge, like really high standards for this one, but I had a standard for it and I just didn't like it. And that would be Zenith by Sasha Osberg and Lindsay Cummings. It just fell flat. Like it wasn't good writing. It needed more edits. It was mediocre. It was rushed. And I need to go into more detail why I didn't like this. And I didn't have that high a standard for it. Honestly, I had a pretty low standard and then it, it came in under that. So disappoint once again. Question six is the biggest surprise. And I have three for this one as well. First one that was a bit of a surprise for me was Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. And I don't know what I was expecting with this one. I think I just picked it up because I saw it at the library and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll read that one. And I loved it. Like I read it and I was like, this is so great. It's a graphic novel. It had pacing, it had story, it had character development. And you don't always get that in a graphic novel. So I read it and I was like, yes. So I'll probably reread it at some point because yeah, it was super good. Totally surprised me. My next surprise is Wool by Hugh Howey. Now this is one I have heard talked of pretty favorably. I haven't heard about it a lot on booktube, but what I have heard has been positive. Now it's probably because this is not YA. This is definitely adult fiction and that's just not as popular on booktube. It should be because there's some really good crap out there, but this one is not talked about a lot. So I think I had like a standard, like it's going to be good because these people have talked about it. I generally trust their taste in books and whatnot. However, it was quite good and it definitely surprised me. It picked up like probably 60% of the way through. I got like 50%. I'm like, oh my goodness, this has got to pick up. And then it did. And now I'm like, ooh, I need to read the next one. I need to buy it. And then I need to read it because it was good. And the last one that surprised me with how good it was was Bear Town by Frederick Beckman. Now, this is one I read earlier this month. I will have a completely spoiler review coming up, probably with my June wrap up. You can fast forward through that part because I just don't think I can talk about this book with anything without spoiling the pants off of it. So you've been warned a second time. It's gonna happen. I really liked this book. Now I picked it up because Emma at Drinking By My Shelf said it was one of her favorite books from last year. And I was like, okay, I can read people's favorite books. I mean, they can't let you down too bad, right? I really liked this book. I don't even think I rated it five stars. I think I did rate it pretty highly. I don't think I knew what I was going to be expecting out of it exactly. I don't think I'd been explained the premise of it at all. So I went in pretty blind and then I really liked it. So it's not that this book is like the best thing I've ever read, but it surprised me in such a positive way that I was like, I'm gonna read it. And now I'm getting ready to read the sequel to it. And I guess maybe now I have expectations. I just might like this man's writing. Let's put it that way. Question number seven, favorite new author. And again, I have three. First one is Frederick Backman, who wrote Bear Town, which I just talked about. I think I might like him as an author. He kind of does that like slice of life kind of book. And I don't always like those, but I did like this. And maybe it was the topic, I don't know. I just need to read more of his stuff because he's a good author and it's my first time reading him. The next one I really liked, Brian K. Vaughnen. K. Vaughn? K. Vaughnen? I'm not sure. He wrote Paper Girls. And I read the whole first four volumes this year and I will read all of these. It's kind of a time travel-y, starts in the 80s with Paper Girls. And it's interesting and it's fun and I like it. And I know he does Saga and I've tried to read Saga. I didn't like Saga, so I probably won't go for it that one, but, but this one I like. And the last new to me author is going to be, I'm gonna try and say this right, Tomi Adian. Adian, I don't think I'm saying this right. And she wrote Children of Blood and Bone, which I also read this month. And maybe just cause it's fresh in my mind, I really did like that book. It was solid, it was good writing. It was really interesting plot, it had a great driving force. It was definitely YA, but I still really enjoyed the book. And I think I just enjoy her writing. So go Tomi. 
Number eight, the newest fictional crush. I'm gonna take a pass on this one. I don't get crushes on book characters. I'm not sure if I'm just too logical for that. Uh, if you do, go you, that's great. But I don't really get crushes on them. I don't see them with me. I can sometimes see things that are, are appealing about them, but I wouldn't say crush. I would say, boy, I'd like to have dinner with them. I'd like to have a friendship with them, but no, nothing else. But going on to nine, newest favorite character. And I told you this book was coming back. Severo from Red Rising. I've read the first two books in the series and Severo is one of my favorite characters. I love him. He is Darrow's best friend. He is so loyal. He's so intelligent and he's just one of my new favorite characters. Like I love him as a character. If he's in a book, I'm going to want to read it. So Pierce Brown, if you decide to do like a side novel with Severo, I will read that junk. Yes, I will. Oh man, I heard, I was listening to my audiobook and I heard Severo and right then it's like Severo looked at and I'm like, it's Severo! Because you're reading Red Rising because we're not going to spoil anything, right? No, I'm reading Red Rising because I'm not going to spoil anything. Wait. Because I'm not going to spoil anything. Okay. And the next character that I absolutely loved is from Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Now, I gotta be honest, I think I loved like all of the characters in this book. I'm not even kidding. I I just love them all. Even the ones that were like bad. I was like, oh, I still like them. Oh, I still like them. What kind of writer writes a book where you like every character? You should hate somebody, right? No, I love them all. But the one in particular I'm gonna be picking out is Light Song. He's about as close to a crush as I could get. I don't really have a crush on him, but just to like sit and have dinner with him or to get to know him, or to, to, yeah, would just be so great and so much fun. Like he's completely engaging and interesting. And I just want to have a sushi dinner with Light Song. It's all I've ever wanted. But then I also like Vivienne and I like Siri and I like the God King. I like Vasher, I like Denth. I just, it's just a really good book. Okay, I'm done gushing now. Uh, number 10, a book that made you cry. I picked two of them for this one. Seriously, I just picked two for everything. I'm such a rebel. I picked Night by Eli Wessel. I literally was crying when I read this book and it's not even long, but I was sitting there and I was reading it in my office, like, like between appointments. And then I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad I don't wear makeup when I work because I would be a hot mess right now. And then I brought it home and I finished it. I think I read it in like a day, maybe, maybe a day and a half, just between clients and it tore my heart out. This is following a man who actually lived to tell the tale about Auschwitz. So that's all you really have to know and get a box of Kleenex, go with it, because holy stars, it'll break your heart. The other one I have is The Color Purple by Alice Walker, I think. And I mean, this book was written in the 80s and I just read it because I saw the play, cried at the play, watched the movie, cried at the movie, read the book, cried with the book. It's just a book that just pulls at your heartstrings because it is historical fiction. So it is fiction, but it is historically accurate in a lot of ways too. And that's the part that's just... It follows a character named Celie from like her teenage 14 year old years till she's like 60 something. Growing up, starting the early 1900s in very poor Georgia, she is black and she is treated like she's trash and she is property from her community members who also are black. and. It was just a really eye-opening book. It was really interesting and it was really heartbreaking. So if you wanna cry, I would start there. Number 11, a book that made you happy. Guys, I have one for this one, just one. I didn't go outside of this. And that would be the Guernsey Literacy Potato and Potato Peel Pie Society. I'm not sure if I can ever say that correctly. And I don't remember the author's name. I'm so sorry, I'll have it up here. I really like this book. I think I read it last week. Did I read it last week? Yeah, I finished it last week. It's a really quick read and it is, it's just happy. I just, it just made me happy. It is a historical fiction book that takes place just after the war in England in this small island, Guernsey, I believe. I think it's on the channel between like England and France and it was occupied by the Nazis during part of the war. And this gal is a journalist and she's going to hear the story of these people. It's a little predictable, but I just loved it anyway. Like, I didn't even care. I'm like, I don't care, it's predictable. I love this book, I wanna read it again. And when the series comes out on Netflix, you can bet your butt, I'll be watching that one. Mm -hmm. Question 12, your favorite book to movie adaptation. Now, I will not be saying Ready Player One because I did not like that movie adaptation, but I am gonna go ahead and go with A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline LaEngle. 
The movie's pretty different from the book, but I still thought it was beautiful and I still loved what they did with it. And I will probably watch it again, quite honestly, whenever it comes out on Netflix or Hulu or whatever, wherever it is, I'll watch it again. I really did like it. 13, your favorite video that I have done this year. And I actually, so I have a few book hauls I've done, which were really fun. I like talking about lots of books in a video. So I love book hauls and I love tags. My husband's November 9 review got great views. It has great comments. It's totally worth watching if you hate the book, even if you like it, it's going to give you some good views on it. And then I did do a video every day in the month of April. So a bunch of those were fun. Like I loved the obscure reads one. I loved the books that I loved as a child one. I loved it when I got to talk about favorite side characters. I could talk about favorite side characters for days, let me tell you. But my favorite ones are probably going to be the judge the book by the cover ones that I did with my family over Christmas. And I did three of them and I'm gonna link those down below because for some reason, two of those were the ones that didn't show up in people's feeds. I don't know why, but they were hilarious and wonderful. I'm just gonna link all three down below. Just watch them, boom, 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 and just see how fun and crazy my family really is. Number 14, the most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year. And I'm gonna go with two again, because I do that. The first one is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. And I've talked about this one a few times and I've talked about beautiful covers. So I did give you guys another one to feast your pretty eyes on. And that is my favorite thing is Monsters by Emile Ferris. And this one's just beautiful in general. Like the, the drawings in this one is a graphic novel and it kind of looks like it's on like notebook paper. And it's supposed to be like a murder mystery and they talk about serious issues in it and stuff like too. I'm honestly saving this for a readathon, but every time I look at the cover, I'm like, it's so beautiful. I just want to read it now. So I don't know if it's going to make it to the end. I might have to read it sooner, but beautiful. And the last one, number 15, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Now I basically need to read all of the books on the shelf and then a few other places as well. I have a lot of books to read by the end of the year. But I went ahead and just picked six of them. And actually, I think only two of them are actually on my TBR shelf. The rest of them are just books that I want to read. First one is going to be Solace by Gail Carringer. This is a the Parasol Protectorate series, which I've been meaning to read for years. And I think I want to start it this year. I know <laughs> I've put it up for a very long time. I own the whole series. I just want to get this one started by the end of this year. Next one is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I have been kind of hesitant to this one. It's been on my TBR shelf off and on and off because I like her writing, but I don't love her writing. Everybody loves her writing and I feel like it's just been so hyped. I'm like, am I actually going to like this book? I don't know, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to read it this fall. I also have been meaning to read The Demon King by Cinda Williams Trima. Now this one didn't make it on my summer TBR because I think it's been on every TBR since I've started booktube. I know, and I just haven't read it. So I decided I'm going to put it off, read it in the fall, give it a shot then, and I will read it by the end of the year. I hope maybe, I hope maybe, I don't know. Next one I want to read by the end of the year is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. Now I have been warned that this one can be kind of dark. I'm not into super dark books, but I'm hoping it's one that I will be able to make my way through. I've heard lots of good things about it, so I'm hoping if I can push through a little bit of uncomfortable for Stephanie, I can get something really great at the end. It's the hope. I also am hoping to read A Sudden Appearance of Hope by Claire North by the end of the year. This is one I actually have like picked up and put it in TBR and I want to read it and I want to read it. And I just keep not reading it for no reason other than it's kind of big and it's a little bit intimidating. So I'm going to try and read it by the end of the year. We're hoping. And the last one that I'm going to read by the end of the year, my husband will do cartwheels seeing this book in my video is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I don't know when I'm going to read this. I think I'm going to at least start it by the end of the year. I haven't decided if I will finish it. It is a big book and all the books in the series are big. <laughs> and I've been told though, once you read one, you want to read the next because they're amazing. It's only three out and there's going to be 10 and they only get bigger. So I am pretty hesitant to start this one, but I think I'm going to start it by the end of the year. This is the only one on the list that is a huge maybe. I'll probably read the rest, but then again, we all know how I am with TBRs. So <laughs> And that is it, you guys. That is my mid-year freak out tag. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and got to hear some good things about books that I have read. A few negatives, but mostly good things about the books that I have read so far this year. And hopefully I have let you know a few of the books I want to read by the end of the year. Let me know the best book that you have read so far this year down below. Also, let me know one book that you would like to have read by the end of the year. I'm totally interested in that. So please, please let me know with your comments. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe and feel free to click the bell icon. Apparently when YouTube misses my videos, 
If you hit the bell, it'll still tell you when I put up videos, even though it won't show up in your feed. I know, right? I post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays, so you can usually find me here on those days. I look forward to seeing you guys then. Goodbye.